G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be installing a Bushman DC85 upright fridge into a canopy using the TLX 4x4 Bushman fridge cage. This fridge cage is found on the website, there's kind of an official pairing between the two. I'll be covering the install of the fridge into the TLX cage step by step. We'll be going through a comparison between upright fridges and chest fridges why I chose this fridge, all the weights and all the costs of all the materials that I use will be covered, the terminations of the cable into an Anderson plug, because the fridge doesn't come with a plug, it needs to be hardwired. Things to look out for, waterproofing the canopy floor. I'm also gonna be altering the way that this door swings open. It has hinges that you can move across to the other side because I would rather it was hinged on the left-hand side. Once it's all installed, we'll turn it on and we'll see how much amps it draws. So the purpose of the fridge cage, there's a few reasons for it. This fridge gets panel mounted inside RVs and caravans. In a canopy, obviously, you need somewhere to mount it to to stop it moving around so much. That's where the fridge cage comes in handy is because you actually mount it to the fridge cage. The fridge cage gets bolted to the canopy floor. The second reason, I guess, is just protection. Stops things bumping into the side. Got the compressor up top here and it helps protect that. And one added benefit for me is that I can use the back of the fridge cage for mounting points or tie down points. Because we have a bit of space between the back of the fridge and the fridge cage, we can put nuts and bolts through there without getting close to damaging the fridge. Now before we get into the mounting and how I spaced everything out, I'm just going to go through upright fridges versus chest fridges and why I chose the Bushman DC85. If you want to skip ahead to the cage mount, or how to change the hinge side on the fridge itself, then there are chapter marks that you can skip ahead to. It's upright fridges versus chest fridges. You've probably heard it all before, but I'll go through my thought process and how I came about choosing this. So upright fridges and chest fridges both still have their place. There's obvious benefits to each, which we'll run through in a second. But for me, my priorities are obviously weight saving, cost saving, but not at the expense of quality, and utilizing the available space as efficiently as possible. So when I considered all of these things, it was a pretty easy decision for me to go with an upright fridge. So in case you don't know, I've got a little graph that will help demonstrate things. It's just off camera at the moment, it's a little bit shy, but I can get it. <clears throat> come on, man. Fuck's sake, come. Just, nobody's gonna laugh at you. Come on. Come on, yep, now go full screen. So if you look at this comparison graph without naming any fridges and their mounting accessories, you can see at the top that we've got one that is a lot lighter and also cheaper than all the other options. And it's not from King's or any other budget brand, it's actually from a reputable company. Now, if we put the names to these fridges and see that that's the upright fridge here. The mounting accessory is this cage. All the weights and costs from this graph are obviously from the manufacturer's websites because I will get to the real weights of the fridge and the fridge cage, but I haven't got there yet. These numbers are just taken from the websites. You notice I'm comparing an 85 litre upright here to 60 to 75 litre chest fridges. And the reason is because that is a closer match in actual carrying capacity. The 85 litres of an upright will not get you the same as 85 litres of a draw fridge because no matter how good you are, you won't be able to pack it to the brim like you would with a draw fridge where it's gravity assisted and everything holds its place inside the fridge well. Which brings me on to the first advantage and first con of upright fridges. The first advantage obviously is the weight. You need to factor in the combined weight, a mounting accessory. All of those chest fridges, realistically, if you want to mount it in any sort of car with a lift or big tires or anything, you need a drop down slide. Now for this size of fridge, anything over about 55 litres requires the Clearview Easy Slide 220 or 220 plus. Now the weight of this Clearview Easy Slide I believe is 47 kilos. So 47 kilos just for the mounting option and $1,079. That's not including the price of the fridge and the weight of the fridge that you need to mount to it. So not only is this half the weight, but it's also cheaper when you take into account that this cage is only $495 and a drop down slide would cost me $1,079. So I'll just show you some screen recordings of how I came up with this weight and cost for the Easy Slide 220. On the Clearview website, they have a spiel about what the Easy Slide is and they advertise this weight here. But what they're doing is advertising the weight of the ES100. They don't advertise all of them because obviously it looks bad. Here's the ES100 on a third party website with that weight. And just for reference, another website, same weight, same product, ES220, 47 kilos. And again on TJM, there's a good price there, but it's 47 kilos. This aligns with what someone who installs them has told me. 
I do find it pretty funny that they try and hide the true weight of the product. And the reason I was using the ES220 is because I went through this list of all the fridges and it's always the ES220 Plus. Once you get above sort of 55 litres in the chest fridges, it's always the ES220 Plus. That 35 to 50 kilo saved is massive. And what I've actually done is gone ahead and bought a drawer shelf combo, 600 mil wide, a pretty heavy duty sort of thing to sit on this left-hand side of the canopy as well. Even the fridge and the cage, plus this drawer shelf combo, is still lighter than most of those other combinations with the Easy Slide 220 Plus. It was a pretty hard sell after that to look anywhere else. Moving on from the cost and weight factor, another advantage for a canopy build like this, the upright fridges take up their capacity mostly in height. So what you get is a lot more room on the back end of the fridge for storage space. A chest fridge of the same size would not come up as high. It would make up its storage space in depth. Now where that doesn't really work for me is because putting things on top of that fridge is not a great solution because obviously you need to access the fridge a lot. So you end up with a lot of wasted space above the fridge and you lose storage space on the other side. So what I'm left with here on top of the fridge is a smaller space, but I can actually load things on top of here, keeping in mind that I wanna be able to dissipate heat, so not overloading it or anything. I can still load things on top and I can still access the fridge. The other advantage is the full access to everything at once. You don't have to dig through stuff. Oh, it's so cold in there. And something small for me anyway is that I can use the back wall as a tie down point, so to speak, for the space on the other side. I've put two eye bolts in there. That will allow me to tie ratchet straps or hockey straps too. I can tie one, two, three jerry cans standing up. It's a Dr. Seuss book in the making. So that's given me a lot of flexibility. Obviously not everything can be positives. There have to be some negatives. You don't get anything for free. Now, there's a few main ones here. The biggest one, as far as I'm concerned, is the capacity. So an 85 litre chest fridge is more capacity than an 85 litre upright. It depends on how well you pack it and what you pack it with, but you probably lose a factor of 25% capacity, maybe a little bit higher, depending on how you pack it. But this 85 litres of an upright is probably closer to more like a 65 litre in a chest fridge, maybe a 70 litre if you pack this really well. But there is no way that this 85 litre will match an 85 litre chest fridge. Another downside that people like to mention, which I don't think is really a big issue at all, is that the cold air can escape easier. But in theory, you don't have to have this open as long because everything's accessible straight away. You don't have to dig through it. I'll mention it anyway, but I don't think it's worth worrying about. But the smaller capacity is definitely true. The other thing is that a lot of your chest fridges will come with dual zone. So it can be a fridge and a freezer, or you can have both as freezers or both as fridges. There's a lot more flexibility there. This is a fridge. You've got this small space up here. That is a freezer space, but realistically it's a fridge. And the other advantage for the chest fridge freezers is the safety of everything inside. You have to be a bit smarter about packing this, make sure things can't move around, rattle around. Things can get thrown around in there, more so than they would in a chest fridge that's well packed. Now you can buy, which I plan on doing, some spring-loaded bars that you slide in and you push everything towards the back of the fridge and they can assist in holding things there. For me, it's an easy choice. If you've got a canopy, I think upright fridge is the way to go. If you're mounting a fridge on top of some drawers in the back of a wagon-style vehicle, then a chest fridge would actually be better because you make up the capacity in depth you don't have as much height to play with. So you might be better off with a chest fridge, depending on your setup, obviously. Those wagons also tend to have a smaller GVM. So on the flip side, maybe an upright would work better for you. So why Bushman and why the DC85? Bushman because they are a good brand. The DC85 or the DC series range because of the glowing reviews and the lack of complaints that I've heard from anyone. So I had a measurement of the 130, but that was just out of curiosity's sake. I think it could be done, but it require a lot of changes. I'd have to drop the fridge off the packers that I've used to raise it. I'd have to take the existing rubber feet off the bottom of the fridge, put a small packer in to compensate so the fridge clears the front of the canopy. It would no longer clear the canopy door striker. Everything would have to shift this way a little bit, plus it is wider, which means the table drawer combo that I have would have to shift this way, which means it would no longer clear this striker, which means I'd have to lift that. That's really pushing towards the back wall there, so whether that even opens at that stage is another question. 
I have no interest of buying the 130. I was just measuring out of curiosity's sake. I think it's more built towards couples or small families. It's quite a large fridge. It does weigh an extra three or four kilos. It uses more power because it's a bigger space to cool down. And obviously it costs more money. This to me, in a practical sense, was the largest fridge that I wanted to go. I didn't want to buy the 65 and then have to go through an upgrade later because you're buying twice and you have to redraw your floor. So I went for the largest practical, easy install that I could do, which to me was the 85. So just the initial product weights here is the cage with all of the sides in the box. We've got the supplied screws and bolts and the instruction 12.177 kg. A Cori split and non-split, I'll use this on the cable for protection, 500 grams. Anderson plug, 36 grams. Now this is lugs and heat shrink, I don't think I'll use them, but 1.183. Here is the nuts and bolts, I'll use a couple M8 eye bolts and some nylock nuts, that was 3.008. Got some yellow packers, 5mm double sided tape and some rubber strips that I'll use to jack the height of the fridge up. Self drilling screws and the fridge with a few mounting points, 26. So you can see it is currently hinged on the right hand side. We'll be removing this top hinge first, Phillips head screws. And then on the bottom here we can remove this hinge as well. Remove this cover first, that will allow us to lift the door off once we take this hinge off. These are just Phillips head screws, if you've got your battery drill license this will be a lot quicker. That's all it is, that hinge. Make sure your little washer comes with you. Then we can remove the door off the bottom hinge and place it to the side. Now that the door's gone, you have access to this bottom hinge. We want to remove this now. Make sure this little plastic washer is still on the hinge and not on the door. Once we have that hinge over here, we will put the door back on. Once we have that door back on, we will put the top hinge in. Some of your holes might be covered in tape, but there is a pre-drilled hole underneath there. It's pretty easy to locate and just drill the screw straight through the tape. Now the bottom hinge is on with the washer. Fridge door goes on there. Now we can attach this hinge up top. So that is just a little bit loose at the moment. You just wanna make sure your door is square before you tighten it up properly. Make sure it sits square and that it closes well. Now for this next bit, we're gonna move the handle to the right hand side. This handle has a little clip, a little edge there. That clip stops the door from opening with this cover when that gets put on. There are two screws underneath this sticker. The instructions suggest that you apply a little bit of heat to it to help remove the sticker. We need to move the screws over here, which means we need to redrill the door frame. In the pack, you receive some stickers that you can use to cover the pre-existing holes in the fridge door. I'm gonna be using a heat gun on the low setting. I like to rotate it like this for no reason at all. So if you use the right tool for the job, it comes off quite easily after you've warmed it up. There's no residue left over. Because I tried to pick at it with my nails, you can see I kind of ruined that edge of it, but that's all good. That's just me being lazy. We have a replacement sticker there, as well as one to cover the eventual screw holes. But if you heat it up and pick it out properly, you can actually reuse that sticker. So all you gotta do is slide it across. You can put it wherever you think it's going to be useful. You can actually clip that off if you want. So I'm just gonna match what they had on the other side. It's about 35 mil in from the outer black trim. Now what the instructions suggest is drilling a pilot hole and then putting the screws in. My drill bits are not small enough, so I'm actually just gonna try and drive this straight through the door. It's easy enough to do, just keep the speed on the drill up to avoid the wobbles. Make sure you're pressing this down into position so it doesn't lift as it wants to drill through. Once it started, finish off with a screwdriver because you got a bit more feel for it. Now using a drill bit would be better because you can see you get a better hole drilled than this which has sort of chipped away that black finish. I'm just going to spray down this surface and this little bit here. Give it a clean and then we'll reapply those stickers. There we have almost the final product. We just have that locking lip to go on here. Now when we install this locking lip, we want it to be hard up against here no more than one millimeter gap. So we don't want this being able to rattle around. We want it pressed up in the locked position. So you'll notice these three holes are slotted. What that allows you to do is move this forward and back slightly to make sure you get proper tension on this locking clip. So get them all started softly. And then all you want to do is push it back 
until it just touches and then tighten it up there. See that release handle is nice and tight and it holds the door closed. Before I nut and bolt anything, I need to put a few sidewalls on just to see how difficult it's going to be to reach this switch panel. So there are a few things to consider. Keeping the weight forward means I would press it as tight as I can up to the red arc, leaving a small gap just for airflow and to allow the fridge cage to flex without hitting the red arc BMS 30. Obviously this also reduces the gap to the switch panel. Anything I install next to the fridge will also be moved forward and it'll be closer to being above the axle. The reason I want to get everything finalized is because I want to cut this rubber out around it and I want it to be as tight a fit as possible just so it looks nice. The other thing to consider is how far forward I move it. Make sure I have enough clearance around it for the canopy door to close. Now the fridge cage itself is pretty self-explanatory. Every side of a cube except the front because that's where the fridge goes. Makes sense, right? Nice and lightweight aluminium. It also comes with a bag of screws, self-tappers, and a bushing for your cable exit. You'll need to provide your own canopy mounting solution, whether that's nut certs or self-drilling screws, that's completely up to you. Now what you need to do is actually get the base where you want it, put the fridge in and build the cage around the fridge. Now for my purposes, I'm actually gonna put the base in and the fridge and the left-hand sidewall just to see how far forward I need it to sit, how much access I have around the side. And then I'll mark up the rubber strip that needs to be cut, cut it, drop this back in, mark up the holes, and we'll go about it that way. One thing I do want to point out, you notice you got three holes. This is for the left and right hand side, but it is not an equal distance from these holes to the edge on the outside. This base plate is not reversible. It does have a direction that it goes. The long side goes towards the front of the fridge. The reason you might want to know that is because if you need to set your length forward, you want the fridge to be in the right place in accordance with the base plate. So if you want to know how far forward the fridge sits on the base plate, what you need to do is get your left or right hand side in position. So these three holes line up with the three holes along the bottom. So that is those three holes lined up. Now what you'll notice is you have smaller holes along the side. Now you might be able to see on the side of the fridge there are these pre-drilled holes. Supposedly they line up with these holes. Now I haven't found that to be the case, not quite, but when that top hole is lined up, I believe this gap above the fridge will be about 15 to 17 millimeters. Now, why that's good for me is because the fridge sits on four rubber feet and what I wanna do is raise those rubber feet because what I'm hoping to do is cut out the rubber matting underneath this bottom panel. It is quite heavy and it's a good little weight saver, but unfortunately, I only have about five mil clearance with this door of the fridge over the striker for the door of the canopy. It would be better if the fridge opens all the way instead of only opening up to there, although that would be usable. It'd be much better if the fridge could open all the way. So if I cut out this rubber matting underneath the fridge, I'll lose 10 mil. So essentially what I'm gonna do is have four 15 mil spaces on each of these feet of the fridge. This base plate will be against the canopy floor and then those rubber feet will sit on 15 mil spaces, which will put it back at this height here. Then up the top, that gap there for the fridge will be basically zero. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that this shelf drawer combo over here also needs to clear this striker. Otherwise, it needs to be raised above, which I'd like to avoid doing. For this particular shelf drawer combo, I need about 603 mil to clear this bolt to here which will be the outside edge. So where the fridge is at the moment would be fine. I could mount it there. Obviously I need to push it into the canopy a little bit to clear the door. And I'll have to raise the fridge on the actual rubber feet of the fridge. And that will maintain this gap over this striker, which gives me a door that actually opens all of the way. So that will give me roughly this size gap along the side here, which is a handy little storage space. I can still access all the switches. The last potential downfall or thing to be considered about this is that the mounting hole for the base plate is here, which lines up with this channel. I was thinking of using nut certs originally, but now I'm leaning towards just going through with a larger self-tapping screw. A nut cert would require an 11 mil hole just to fit an eight mil nut cert in there and it wouldn't pinch properly through the width of the floor plus the channel. But I couldn't use nut certs on this right hand side. I could on the left, but then you also have the problem of the nut cert being more difficult to install and 
Very unlikely, but possibly it could be a dust ingress point. The self-tapping screw will be a bit easier to waterproof, and if I ever remove it, it'll have a smaller hole that needs covering up compared to the nut so I'm just positioning it with the door closed to make sure I have enough clearance because once I cut this 10mm rubber, but raise this by 10mm to compensate, it will basically be sitting in this exact position. It is difficult to see, but it's actually not touching. So I'm just going to push it back another 5mm and I think that'll be it. Now the idea is I was going to buy a 10mm packer, but what I didn't want was this to be sliding around. So instead I've gone a five mil packer, cut this in half because it's a little bit wider than I need. Use this outdoor adhesive tape. I'm gonna mount this to the bottom of the fridge cage so it'll be stuck there on this side. Double side tape, bottom of the fridge cage. On the top side, I will have this tape holding a rubber strip along here. So I had four mil clearance. I lose 10 when I cut out the rubber mat. This gives me back five of that, so I'm still one mil short. This rubber strip I believe is one or two thick uh, without being compressed. This will add a couple of mil as well. So I'll be just under that original 10 mil that I had. So I should maintain about maybe three mil of clearance. So that's the general plan with this. Little yellow packers that I bought, a five mil thick, double sided tape and a little bit of rubber there, double sided tape here. What I'm gonna do is lift up the fridge, slide these under the feet, peeling the tape off. This will stick onto the bottom of the fridge cage. So this is nine millimeters thick without any compression. The fridge obviously will sink a little bit into that. If it's not enough, all I'll do is another bit of rubber there. I just wanna clean the surface before I peel this back just so we have as good a stick as possible. I've cut out the floor mat. Now I'll just give this a vacuum, then I'll drop the base in, drill it, pull the screws back out, put a bit of silicon in there, put the screws back in. So hopefully everything's sort of watertight on the canopy floor. It does clear it, but it's very, very close. I might just cut off one more strip of rubber. Now what I want to do now is square off the front edge and mount this in its final position. Then I can put the fridge on and mount that. So that's showing with as square. I'm going to go through with a tech screw straight into the floor. These are shallow enough that I don't hit anything on the underside, it's got a water tank under there, but deep enough to get a really good grip. Because this is in position, I'm gonna pin the back, then I can lift the fridge off without the base moving, and then I can pin the front, raise up the front just to give the door one mil more clearance, and then we'll start putting the cage on, terminating the cable, putting cable protection on. Gonna put a little square rubber piece at each screw hole. Gonna silicon around here and dab a bit of silicon through the hole itself. And this is just to try to keep dust and possibly water out. Hopefully never water. So before we connect all the cage up, what I wanna do is just prep the cable. So it's basically ready to connect. With the cage, you have a number of pre-drilled holes. I'm gonna be using this one down here on the left-hand side, because as you can see, if I push this out of the way, I have an Anderson plug that I have already fit. That is already a switched circuit for the fridge. So first things first, just going through the instructions, it asks you that the fridge is on its own circuit, that it doesn't share a circuit. It does say, that it's better off to avoid bus bar connections. Now, I obviously have a bus bar on my negative and the active is also technically a bus bar, but it is fused separately. So I don't foresee there being any issues with that because it's on its own circuit. So in regards to cable sizing, I've run 10 gauge here, which is overkill. You don't need 10 gauge. The Anderson connector that I purchased came with 10 gauge lugs in it and I wanted the best connection possible. The fuse size recommended for the fridge is 15 amps. Although I'm led to believe, and we will test this once we finish, that they've actually capped the draw on the compressor to three or four amps. I can't remember exactly what it is, but a few size of 15 amp allows a little bit extra headroom just in case it does peak a little bit higher than that. The supplied cables are 14 gauge. This 14 gauge, I think I'll be able to bend this over and fit it straight into the 10 gauge lugs of my Anderson connector. Obviously the Anderson connector will not fit through the hole, but we don't need it to. I just wanna get the lugs on with the heat shrink. And I'm also gonna add some corrugated tubing just to protect it all the way through here. I need the full length, or basically, to reach that Anderson connector. 
I'd almost suggest that that is designed to fit a 10 to 12 gauge lug. The way they've stripped it and bent it over is the appropriate size and length for the lugs that I've got, just by coincidence. So I've got both of these cables bent over that 14 gauge into a 10 gauge lug. Once it's through the other side, I'll connect the actual Anderson plug. So the cable runs along here now. It is protected. I've just cable tied it to the back of the compressor cage. Now we have our lugs and heat shrink applied. This will get fed out this bushing. Once it goes through that bushing, we connect it to the Anderson plug. The Anderson plug will get connected to that Anderson plug there, which is a switched circuit for the fridge from the Blue Sea Safety Hub 150. But you can see how much room we've got on the back edge. That's for airflow, obviously. Similar to how I have tight end points here, I'm actually gonna drill two M8 holes in the back and I'm gonna attach these to collared M8 eye bolts. So the idea here is that when I install the draw shelf combo, it might protrude a little bit deeper than the fridge itself. So I expect it to come past by about 150, maybe more. It depends how far back I have to push the draw shelf combo or how close I can get it to that outer left-hand canopy door. But basically, there'll be a small recess slash pocket here that I could probably use because I'm getting rid of one of my jerry can holders and making it a gas holder. So the final look of the car will only have one jerry can holder on the back. I could use these eye bolts here, strap a water bottle in here so there's no gas or diesel inside the canopy with the electrics. Water and electricity go really well together, so that's not an issue. If I wanted to double this up, I could. I just get a longer strap. There won't be too much force on this or on the back of the fridge cage. It's basically just to keep it standing upright. Now on the back of the fridge cage to the back of the fridge, there's a 100 mil gap. So this protrusion is not gonna affect anything on the back of the fridge. That is just empty space for ventilation. Now that is all the hard stuff done. The next bit is pretty easy. We're gonna put the cage on and we just build it around the fridge. So the cage to cage connections, we use these screws like this. For the cage to fridge connections, we have screws like this that are self-drilling. You'll have four strips, two long and two short. The two long go at the front of the fridge, in between the cage and the fridge. These self-drilling screws will go through there. The two short ones go at the back. Two holes in the short one, four holes in the long one. So the only issue that comes up here when you're building the cage is that depending on where yours is mounted, you'll actually have to make the cage elsewhere and then drop it back into its final position. Opening the door gives you access to the front bolts. So I'll need to unbolt this, lift everything out, make the cage up, and then lift it back and bolt it back in. And the reason being is this left-hand side, we have these strips that need to go through with self-drilling screws. Now obviously that means we need to get a drill between here and here. It's not gonna work unless you unbolt it, make the cage up elsewhere, and then we drop it into position and do the bolts back up. So first things first, we get the left hand side, bottom three screws started. Now these three are just in loosely so we can put these plastic strips in. There are pre-drilled holes on the front edge of the fridge. However, cause I've actually raised this by eight or nine mil, they won't line up, but it's fine to just use a self-drilling screw to go through the side. So all we're doing is repeating the process on the right now. You put your three bottom screws in, Long strip goes through here, four self-tappers. The short strip goes at the back with two self-tappers. You can see I've rerun the cable over the top and that's because where it was, the cage would go back together, but it was sort of filling that bottom vent and I'd rather just keep all the vents free to give it the best cooling possible. Once the left and right hand side is done with the plastic fillers, short ones at the back, long ones at the front, without having tightened everything up, just everything's still loose. The next step is the back plate, three bolts per side, and then we'll stick the top on. Once you have every bolt started, you can go through and tighten them all up because this left hand side will be tightened. That means we can put it in position and bolt it down. Now obviously on the top panel, your vents are towards the back, which matches the back panel and the right hand panel. You see all the vents surround the compressor. Above the fridge, there still remains probably about 20 mil worth of clearance, if not a tiny bit more. And that is after I raise the fridge. So you can see where the silicon sort of squeezed out the edge of the rubber strip there. I'm just gonna add one little dab of silicon straight in the hole, and then I will mount these in through there. So you can see in there the amount of space we have still above the fridge. This is after I've raised it. And you can see the gap between the top of the fridge and the lip. If you needed to raise your fridge by another five mil, you could get away with it before the fridge contacts the bottom of that lip. 
If you needed to raise your fridge even higher, you could cut this lip off with a grinder and then you could actually raise your fridge inside the cage by another 20 to 25 mil. Just gonna drive the screws through a bit of silicon just in case the waterproofing was ruined when I removed them. But also when it dries, hopefully it acts as a bit of an anti-vibration measure so the screws will not be able to rattle loose at all. I don't think that was going to be an issue, but I'm just justifying this to myself. So the good news is that the fridge is working. It is drawing about 3.9 amps at the moment. 4.1 amps, that is pretty consistent. So we've got 4.3 here, 4.5 here, just clamped over the main feed. So this multimeter is reading exactly the maximum in the brackets here. What I've been told is that they cap the amperage draw so it won't suck the life out of your battery. It'll just gradually cool down the fridge. subtracting the weights that didn't get put into the car and on the screen will be the amount that got added for that particular component. Starting with the Bushman fridge with these mounting bars. Now these are for your cabinet mounts. I have no use for these. The instructions and some self-tapping screws for those cabinet mounts. That's how much weight we added for the fridge. That brings the total weight of the fridge to 24.456. Now that is about 2.95 or 3 kilos heavier than advertised which is disappointing to see from Bushman. If anyone else has weighed one of these fridges, I'd be interested in knowing what you got, just in case my scales are off. In this box was the TLX 4x4 fridge cage. Here we go, so that's how much the fridge cage weighs. In the interest of being fair to Bushman, that comes in 2.12 kilos lighter than advertised. So when you combine the two, they're off by about 800 grams. So I'm not sure where these discrepancies come from, but that's just what I got on my scales. Nuts and bolts. We use some um, MAI bolts and a few nylock nuts. Self-drilling screws. Heat shrink and lugs. I didn't use any lugs. So on the screen is how much weight we added for the job of raising the fridge. Anderson plug. Split and non-split tubing. So the amount of rubber matting that we removed 2.523 kilos were removed by cutting that rubber mat out. It's pretty good savings. This is heavy duty mat, it is quite heavy. So after we add all those up and take away the subtractions, it's 33.689 kilos added to the car for this job. You can flip this top lid upside down and then you'll actually have a lid facing up, which gives you a storage space here that things can't slide off because this lip will be pointing up. But that is something to consider. If you want to use this as a storage space, you can flip this upside down. This surface here will be where this lip is. So in my case, that'll be about six or seven millimeters gap. But if you haven't put packers in like I have, you'll actually have about 16 to 17 mil gap there, even when it's reversed. You'll actually be changing from a gap of 40 mil, flipping it, going to a gap of about 20 mil. In my case, I'd be changing from a gap of about 25 mil to a gap of five mil. As you can see, the compressor itself that needs the venting has got vents built all around it. And we have 110 mil on the back wall. That is just pure empty space to assist in ventilation. So don't be afraid to flip the lid for ventilation reasons. You can do it. It's not gonna cause you any dramas. I might look to do it one day, but until I find an actual use for storing something on top of the fridge, I'm not going to do it for the sake of it. Just to look at the final install, you can see that is quite a small gap through there. I can still reach all these switches quite easily, that's the fridge. And you might be able to see how much room we have on top of the fridge. And here is the back wall with my two tie down points, bolted in with nylock nuts on the other side just so they don't vibrate loose. On the inside, you can move the shelves around, there's a fair bit of space there. And because of the footprint, there's plenty of space in the canopy still. All right, that's it. That is the Bushman upright fridges into a TLX 4x4 Bushman fridge cage. That's how you install it. For me, a lot of the time was spent getting the clearances right, making sure the door opened properly over the canopy door locks, making sure it fit just far enough back to clear the canopy door and making sure my measurements are right to allow for 
the table drawer combo that I have to install next to the fridge. So that included adding some packers under here. So all of that took a bit of time. If you have a simpler mounting system and you know exactly where it's going, this shouldn't take you long at all. So you've got a few customizability choices here. You've got the top that you can flip to create a lid to stop things sliding off. You've got 110 mil on the back wall that you can use to mount things to. For me, it was a simple choice to go with the upright fridge. The fact that it weighs less than half of the combination of an easy slide plus a chest fridge of the equivalent sort of capacity was enough to sell it for me. Then you add on top of that the fact that it is cheaper, it is great quality, it takes up less room on the canopy floor. There's so many benefits and as far as I'm concerned there's only really two downsides which is a technical reduction in capacity and the fact that you don't really have the ability to have a fridge or a freezer or two fridges or two freezer compartments. They're the two main downsides to me. You kind of get what you're given and then you have to work around that. Everything else to me was a positive and this was the most appealing option on the market. So hopefully that's been of some help would have jumped to the running costs and weights <laughs> just gonna make me cry, but here it is. Welcome to the floor. This fridge, it, we can have bolts and that. Uh, make to the chain, we'll be covering all the, the install of, turn it on and see how much amp it forward towards. Oh. The other thing to consider is how it, that fridge drawer, drawer, just keep the spill on the it's a nice tight hole. The self tap. So I'm thinking, Oh, I'll fucking put it in back to front. But this 14 gear, okay, so they're both. But we'll have to make the cage out. We'll have to make free to give it as good as the install. Just gonna breathe. This is what the final product looks like. How I, with my, for me, in one, two each, which will run through. Now, if we look at this graph, Graph or graph? Steffi graph. Pairing A and so massive advantage. So yeah, uh, unfortunately, so not obvi another obviously. And the other, pack this smartly, things will, you have to pack this a bit more. It's thrown around in there. A wagon styled video. So I can still reach all of these fridges. The TLX 4x4. You can flip to, you've got 110 mil a reason to but that 